Good morning, everybody. Happy to see a lot of you here, a lot of known faces and a lot of young faces. This is what uh, I like a lot, uh, working with uh, aging research. Uh, we need uh, to have young uh, people uh, who continue to work on this field uh, that is a challenging field and you know very well, uh, especially you that working with multimorbidity. It's not easy to work both clinically and in research with multimorbidity and this uh, symposium is done just for that because we want to try to help each other coming from different disciplines. And this is what really I like of this in initiative, that we have been able to bring together two di at least two different worlds. One is the geriatric, uh, gerontologic, uh, geriatric medicine, a uh, gerontological field together with uh, family medicine. And I'm really very happy to share uh, this uh, committee who has organized the symposium together with Jose Maria Valderas uh, that uh, is here with me. Uh, let me uh, thank immediately also our supporters. This means uh, in a very nice way to say those who have helped us, especially economically and uh, with uh, the organization. And first of all is the Journal of Internal Medicine, and we will hear a little bit about that also from the chief editor, Ulf de Fer. I want to thank Karolinska Institute for all the help and the hospitality in this uh, nice room, and we will hear about uh, Karolinska Brau, our our vice president. And then we have uh, our guests from uh, United Kingdom, University of Ex Exeter, say right? And the Threads and Jarns collaboration. And finally, indeed, I am very happy that also the um, strategic research on epidemiology at KI has uh, provided us the support because thanks to them, we have so many young people here. I don't want to take much more time. I leave uh, the word to Chema, that is uh, the name that we use to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Laura. Yeah, uh, thanks very much for the introduction. Uh, I would like to, to also extend uh, my thanks to uh, everybody who has found uh, time and may set aside time to joining us today. Uh, the, this initiative uh, is really about uh, starting a conversation uh, across uh, fields who have been uh, heavily involved in uh, developing the, the field of multimorbidity and frailty and uh, making, creating a space and opportunity for uh, uh, discussing together uh, common problems that have been so far perhaps addressed with uh, slightly, or, or slightly different uh, approaches. Um, uh, this all started, I mean, just uh, really, we, we, uh, one of the organizers is a, a very loose uh, international network of researchers in multimorbidity across Europe, which is called Threads and Yarns, in memory of, a, uh, um, of, a, of an image and a metaphor that Barbara Starfield, uh, um, a professor of uh, uh, health services research at the University of, of uh, uh, Johns Hopkins, um, developed for the notion of, of multimorbidity. And uh, the, the Threads and Yarn initiative has uh, had organized a number of symposia, uh, depending very much on uh, uh, available fundings, uh, particularly the University of Frankfurt. We had a couple of events, and uh, just uh, 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 a few months ago, we were discussing with Amaya uh, Calderon whether we could perhaps resuscitate the initiative and uh, arrange something uh, 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 perhaps of a broader scope, perhaps uh, addressing these these issues, and here we are. Uh, we drafted the wish list of, of participants and uh, speakers and discussions, thinking, well, maybe we can, we can get 20%. We got everybody, full house, and we're also delighted that so many other people were interested in joining us today. So you're probably more interested in what other different people have to say. Just thank you again for uh, for coming, and I'll hand over to Laura. Um, just to give you some indication, it's not only Chem and I that uh, has worked together to put all uh, the things, but we have a fantastic uh, collaboration in the scientific committee. And let me uh, start to thank, I know that usually we thank at the end, but I want to thank at the beginning, because I think uh, 
most of the job has been already done uh, during this month. And I want to thank uh, Christiane Mast, uh, Marie Eris Doctor, who will come tomorrow and chair the section tomorrow morning, and Amaya Calderon and uh, Davide Vetrano. And uh, please, I mean, uh, feel free to contact one of us if you need something. And now we are very pleased to ask Corinne Dahlman Wright to come and to give an official welcome from Karolinska Institute. Corinne is a professor in molecular endocrinology and the vice president of Karolinska. And she has done a fantastic job in the last two years here at KI. So I'm very pleased to have her here. Thank please. you so much. A warm welcome to Karolinska Institute on this beautiful, early, and actually very warm summer day. And also a warm welcome to Nobel Forum, where you are now. Since 1901, the Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has selected the Nobel laureates in physiology or medicine. And it's actually announced in this very room. And I know Laura is going to try to get you into the room upstairs where the Nobel Assembly meets. We will see how successful she will be. <laughs> Karolinska Institute is one of the world's foremost medical universities. Our vision is to make a significant improvement of human health, and our mission is to conduct research and education and interact with the surrounding society. We account for over 40% of the medical academic research in this country, and we offer the country's broadest range of education in medicine and health sciences. We have 6,000 students, about 5,000 employees, of which close to 400 are professors. Our research extends from basic molecular and cellular levels to clinical research and societal studies. We call it from cell to society. Laura just told me, you don't know so much about Karolinska Institute that you don't know when it's founded, so I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> it was actually founded in 1810, and that's why we had our 200-year celebration in 2010. And it was actually founded to uh, treat uh, soldiers who were wound, wounded at war. I think our country was much more at war in those days back in 1810. So it's been a long journey to this internationally recognized university that we are today. That's the crash course. Uh, the bonds between the medical university and the healthcare sector must be strong, and KI research is very closely integrated with the healthcare system. This is vital for scientific achievements to be translated into new clinical practice. Of equal importance is, of course, that clinical needs are quickly fed back into the research environment. Additionally, collaboration between universities and the rest of the society is of utmost importance, and I think that's what we see part of today. More than half of KIA's research is carried out together with an international party, Knowledge knows no boundaries, and by working together, we can make a difference, both within the field of research, but also actually to bring countries closer. With an increasingly elderly population, multimorbidity is becoming a major clinical challenge. My own father, at the age of 91 years, he still lives in his own house. He doesn't drive his car anymore, but he clearly suffers from multimorbidity. When he puts his pills in a row on his bed before taking them, it is an intriguing actually to think how this row of pills interact with each other in the body. And I actually find it highly unlikely that he takes the right number of the right pills at the right time. But he's still quite okay. <laughs> so I think you really have a, I think you can do a lot of good for him as well. Scientists at Karolinska Institute perform world-leading research in aging, dementia, epidemi epidemiology, and care sciences. Thus, we are very well equipped to contribute to multimorbidity research and developing evidence for clinical practice and health policies. Karolinska Institute is also proud to host the aging research center, ARC. ARC was established in 2000 by Karolinska Institute at Stockholm University and is organized under the Department of Neurobiology and Care Sciences in society, including the three major disciplines, psychology, social gerontology, and medicine. 
The center is well positioned to address the aging process in all its complexity, <laughs> combining different perspectives, including multi-morbidity. The expectations that half of European citizens in the future will suffer multi-morbidity really emphasize the need for action to the benefit of the individual as well as society at large. Once again, welcome to Karolinska Institute and I wish you all a very rewarding conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Karin. I uh, appreciate that you take, uh, I know that you have a busy schedule today. <laughs> and now we have a Professor of Defer, and uh, if I remember well, you have Professor in cardio Cardiovascular Epidemiology uh, from Karolinska Institute, but now mostly really engage uh, full time in this fantastic journal of internal medicine, has have, have in the last year a very uh, great success. And uh, I think a lot for your initiative, and we are happy to have you here and to hear a little bit more about the journal. Thank you very much. We are happy to be able to support this meeting, and um, um, this is an old uh, scientific journal. It was actually uh, founded by Axel K. He was uh, inspector, vice chancellor of Karolinska Institute, uh, and uh, he, he founded Medicines Archive in 1863, and then we, the name was changed, and from uh, 1989 uh, it's called Journal of Internal Medicine. <coughs> and uh, it has developed uh, fairly well with regard to, to ranking, and we have an impact factor close to nine. And uh, we receive about uh, 800 submissions, eight to 900 submissions e each year, and we have to react a lot, uh, so the acceptance rate is, is close to 10% with regard to original manuscripts. And as Karin mentioned, we, we also cover from cell to, <laughs> to society, uh, and, uh, and, and we publish uh, uh, articles, uh, within basic science, clinical, epidemiology, and treatment. And we cover various uh, uh, fields. There has been a focus for many years uh, on cardiovascular uh, uh, aspects, metabolic aspects, inflammation, cancer, neurology, and also rare diseases. And uh, uh, the, the uh, office here is, is uh, located at uh, at Karolinska Institute. And uh, you could visit uh, us at the website, and uh, uh, there will be three articles, reviews published from this symposium to be published in Journal of Internal Medicine. So, thank you very much. <laughs>